Hi, everyone. Dr. Susan Brown, director of the Center for Better Bones. I welcome all the Better Bones Facebook community this week to just think a few minutes about genes. This week we've been writing about genes. You know, when they first discovered this whole genome, the idea was, wow, we've got 20, we've got 20,000 genes in the human body. These genes control our height, our weight, what's gonna, what we're gonna look like, even what we're gonna do, how we're gonna behave, our predisposition to illness. This was the original thought. Then we started realizing that there's a level above the genes, and that's called epigenetic. And this is when we realized that these 20,000 genes that we have, these 20,000 genes are not all active at the same time. In fact, only a minority of them are active at any time. And as it turns out, there's turn-on switches and turn-off switches. And one of the first things that the scientists realize that foods can affect our genes. And this is a discussion of epigenetics, the level above genetics, that it's the genes themselves, which ones are on or which ones are off, can be determined by the food. And this is the whole discussion, for example, of these anti-cancer foods, like broccoli and berries and all these fruits and vegetables, that actually help the body turn on genes that are protective against cancer and turn off the genes that are perhaps too inflammatory and cause a breakdown of the system. So we've known for some time that foods can affect genes, I was in a meeting several years ago and I said they were talking about foods affecting genes and nutrients affecting genes, affecting gene expression. The 20,000 genes are there, which ones are turned on and which ones are turned off. So I raised my hand and I said, gee, this is interesting. Has anybody studied how thoughts affect our genes? This was a meeting probably eight or nine years ago. They said, no, no one's thought of it, but it's a good idea. Now it has actually happened. We have many studies explaining how our thoughts, how our attitudes, how our beliefs, how our social circumstances affect which genes are turned on and which genes are turned off. You know, we've known for a long while that people who are socially isolated, people who are lonely, actually have more diseases and actually have more causes of early death. We've known that was true, but we didn't understand all the mechanisms. One important mechanism is that emotion of loneliness, that lack of feeling social belonging, actually turns on certain genes that are very damaging to the human body. And the easy to measure genes are ones that relate to inflammation. But of course, there's a whole cascade of genes that can be turned on. So we now know that our thoughts affect our genes. This week's blog talks about that, talks about how asthma is different with people who are in stress situations, how loneliness, how different social circumstances can actually change gene expression, particularly highly emotionally charged circumstances, and even the length of the telomeres, those little caps on the end of our genes that so determine our longevity, they're very affected by different thoughts we have, in particular stressful thoughts and thoughts with negative emotions. So the researchers then went beyond that and said, well, what can we do to help turn on good genes as far as our thoughts and our mind goes? And if you've read the blog, you know what they came up with was meditation and mindfulness. And this, of course, is an ancient technique developed by cultures thousands of years ago as a way to quiet the mind and actually, when we quiet the mind, we turn on beneficial genes and we turn off the inflammatory harmful genes. So I was very surprised at the literature. There's a vast degree of literature looking at this. And what you see, of course, many of the studies on meditation, people who've meditated for a longer period of time are much, have a much better profile of the good guy, the good lady genes being turned on. New meditators takes a little while to get into this. But it's very fascinating. The thoughts we have, how we perceive the world, two of us can be in the same sort of stressful situation. I might worry a lot about it. I might turn on a lot of genes that are detrimental. You might be more easygoing and say, hey, that's just life. I'm not going to get too distressed by it. You might not turn on so many inflammatory or unhealthful genes. Meditation is one way for all of us to quiet the mind, to go back to that wellspring of power and intelligence with us and kind of let go of some of these emotional stresses and strains. One thing that's really clear is 
that community, feeling a sense of belonging, feeling that we are a part of something larger than ourselves is very important for turning on these beneficial genes. And actually, the Better Bones community is our effort to add towards that bank of well-being in the world. So I hope you all take the time to communicate with one another. This Facebook is a great avenue for that. Know that your social interactions, positive social interactions, really help your well-being. I'm reminded of Deepak Chopra's concept that nothing holds more power over the body than thoughts held in the mind. So we're going to become a little bit aware of our thoughts, be a little choosy about our thoughts. My final comment would be, my final word of wisdom for this week is, like Esther Hicks from the Abraham Hicks material says, we don't eat food that we don't like, so we should think twice about entertaining thoughts that we don't like or that don't feel good to us. Okay, it's been talking, good talking to you, and remember, your genes are very flexible. You can, you can really turn on the good guy genes with your thoughts, with your food, and your, and your exercise. Be well. We'll talk later.